Hi there and welcome to this edition of Biz Asia on CCTV News. I'm Chen Lei and we're broadcasting live from Beijing. China will send another spacecraft, the Shenzhou 10, into space on Tuesday. Just an hour ago, China's manned space program team briefed media on the launch plan and the crew at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center, which is in northwestern China's Gansu province. The spacecraft will take off at 5.38 p.m. Beijing time on Tuesday, weather permitting. Three astronauts, two males and one female will join this mission. Nia Haisheng, who has already experienced a space mission, will be the space commander. Zhang Xiaoguang, another male astronaut, will be the assistant of the commander and will also be the cameraman. Wang Yaping, a former Air Force pilot, will become the second Chinese woman to go into space. The crew members will stay in orbit for 15 days. During the time, they will carry out manual and automatic docking experiments between the spacecraft and the orbiting lab module Tiangong-1. Shenzhou-10 is the latest of China's Shenzhou aircraft uh, family and it is the fifth one to carry astronauts into space. Now, as we said, of course, China is uh, sending another spacecraft into space on Tuesday, and uh, to do that, the manned space program has just held another press briefing, and uh, our correspondent Tang Bo is there at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center, and we are now crossing live to Tang Bo to find out all the details. Hey there, Tang Bo, great to hear from you. So, tell us about the highlights from the press briefing. Well, the mission, uh, the mission headquarters has decided after discussion that the Shenzhou 10 manned spaceship will be launched tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. And the crew consists of male astronaut Nie Haisheng, Zhang Xiaoguang, and female astronaut Wang Yaping. And uh, Zhang Xiaoguang will be the commander of the mission. And, um, and this kind of the gender combination can make full use of the advantages of the crew members. And these two male astronauts are mutually back up, and they are both capable of... Uh, um, com uh, complex management and dealing with the emergency. And the female astronaut will be uh, the main instructor of the space science education activity, and she's also able to um, carry out the manual rendezvous and docking. Um, and as for the uh, main objectives of this mission, there are four of them. First, to launch Shenzhou 10 manned space trips and provide crew and cargo transportation service for the uh, single one. And uh, second, to further verify the supporting um, the capability of single one for the work, and third, to carry out astronaut space uh, adapt adaptability and space operation and study, and the last one is to further the test, uh, um, the function and performance as well as the coordination of various systems of the engineering project. Back to you. So, Tangbo, with just about 25 hours to go until the actual launch, how are the preparations going? How did the astronauts seem to you? Well, um, this afternoon, when actually the rocket boosters will be loaded with fuel, and the whole fueling process will last for about five hours. And besides testing for all the launch vehicles, other spacecraft, and some relating products um, have been finished, they're in good condition and are ready to blast off. And as for the three astronauts, uh, they have already finished the, their training, and they're in good spirit and ready for the uh, mission too. And the mission is expected to last for about 15 days and longer than um, uh, all the uh, previous flights. And if conducted successfully, I think China's space program will be one step closer to truly master the rendezvous and the docking technology. Back to you. All oh, very exciting stuff. Thank you so much, Tang Bo, our correspondent, reporting live from Jiuquan Launch Center in northwest China's Gansu province. Now, for more analysis on the Shenzhou 10 launch, we are joined in the studio by Mr. John Lewis, Professor Emeritus of Planetary Science at the University of Arizona's Lunar and Planetary Laboratory. Welcome to our show, Professor. Now, of course, the mission of this uh, this launch is to have these docking experiments. Now, how do you think China is going in terms of its uh, mission to have a space station within the next decade? And also, how would you rate China's space science progress? Well, the, uh, the, the plans that China has laid for developing a space station and presumably for using the space station are, uh, have been done in a very systematic and orderly fashion. There is no space race going on right now, so China has been able to set its own goals to make its own uh, stepwise progress Not without, being forced without having to respond to emergencies caused by another country. Yes, right. And uh, I think it's making a very satisfactory progress. Uh, I think the prospects for having a large space station, a large Chinese space station within several years are excellent. 
It will require a larger rocket booster. The, uh, the Long March 5 boosters due for its first flight sometime next year. And then the space station can be assembled one block at a time in the same way that the Soviet Union assembled its space stations and the International Space Station was assembled. Now you mentioned the space race. Now that has ended. The Cold War mentality has ended about you know, three decades ago. So what do you think is the likelihood of the US and Russia and China working together on their space technology? I think the, the prospects are actually excellent. I think the, uh, the reasons why it was difficult 30 years ago are no longer applicable. And I think that many other countries as well will join in. The European Space Agency contains, what, nearly 20 countries. And uh, this uh, having a, a, a common project to which they can all contribute will give them, uh, first of all, uh, save money for each individual country. And second, it will give them personal contact between the uh, space workers of the very, these very uh, different countries and encourage them to think in terms of other cooperative missions in the future. So a lot of knowledge and experience sharing. Yes. Great. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Mr. John Lewis from Thank the you. University of Arizona's Lunar and Planetary Laboratory. Now, Shenzhou 10, of course, is China's fifth manned mission to space and will last 15 days. Now, this afternoon, we found out about the lineup of the astronauts, and CCTV's Jin Ya Chow has more on the three astronauts who will take part in this mission. Ni Hai Sheng will be the mission's chief commander. It will be his second time in space after also taking part in the Shenzhou 6 mission. And this mission is something new in store for him. On Shenzhou 9, there was a 24-hour rotation policy, which meant the crew had to work 24 hours a day. But this time we can sleep during the night, and after finishing our daily duties, we'll have time to relax and do things like appreciate the beautiful view of space and listen to some music. Ni Haisheng was born in a small village in Zhaoyang County in central China's Hubei province, the sixth of ten children. Ni's family was so poor that he only finished middle school with help from his teacher and neighbors. I was in the second year of junior high school when my father died. My family was so poor, I was forced to stop school and work in order to earn money. My teacher visited my family many times to try to persuade me to return. Finally, I went back to school. I wouldn't have what I have now without my teacher. That was the most important turning point in my life. The second turning point was after I graduated from high school and joined the army to become a pilot. That was the first step along my career path. The third turning point was passing the physical test for astronauts in 1996, which finally offered me the opportunity to go into space. Zhang Xiaoguang was chosen in 1998 for China's space mission. Fifteen years later, finally he's ready to go. I will look at our beautiful planet, our beautiful homeland. I can find out whether it's possible to see the Yangtze River and Yellow River. I can take a look at the deep universe and shining stars. I feel very excited. Since the team of astronauts was created in 1998, China has carried out four manned space missions. Whenever they reach space, they always phone their families. And this time is no exception. I think of my father. He said, son, go, be courageous and careful. I also think of my wife. I know she's very busy. Our child is taking exams for high school. A couple of days ago, I went home and said, you must be very tired. You know what she said? She was like, not at all. This is what I must do for my family and my love. Wang Yaping is the only female in the crew. She'll become the second Chinese female astronaut in space. It's been a long and winding road to the launch pad. It takes a great deal to become an astronaut. You have to be outstanding overall, have great specialty knowledge, go through lots of rigorous training to adapt to the space environment, and take very strict tests that allow almost no errors or mistakes. Before becoming an astronaut candidate, Wang used to be a pilot. She flew as part of relief efforts following the Wintran earthquake in 2008, as well as in other operations at the Beijing Olympic Games. 
I remember the first time I flew a plane on my own. I turned around and found my trainer was not with me. I was really thrilled and had a good shout in the cockpit. It's like I could finally do this on my own. One united Chinese dream. They can fly themselves. Jane Chow, CCTV. Lucky three astronauts who are going to space about an, a day from, to, from right now, in fact. Now,